In Gus Vincent's Last Days, the filmmaker delves into the enigmatic final moments of a fictionalized version of rock musician Kurt Cobain. Released in 2005, the film offers a meditative and introspective look into the mind of a troubled artist grappling with fame, addiction, and existential angst. Set against the backdrop of the Pacific Northwest, the film immerses viewers in a world of desolation and solitude, mirroring Cobain's own struggles with isolation and the pressures of being a celebrity. Central to Last Days is a theme of isolation. Blake is portrayed as a man adrift in a sea of loneliness, unable to connect with those around him despite his best efforts. The film depicts his interactions with various characters, bandmates, friends, and more as fleeting and superficial, highlighting the profound disconnect between Blake and the world outside of him. This sense of alienation is further underscored by the film's sparse dialogue and somber soundtrack, which serve to reinforce the protagonist's sense of estrangement from society. The film draws inspiration from the life and death of Kurt Cobain, the iconic frontman of the band Nirvana. Cobain's tragic suicide in 1994 left an indelible mark on the music industry and pop culture, prompting widespread speculation and fascination with the enigmatic artist's final days. Gus Van Sant's film serves as a contemplative reflection on Cobain's tumultuous journey, exploring themes of fame, addiction, and existential angst. Through the character of Blake, Van Sant offers a fictionalized account of Cobain's inner struggles, capturing the essence of his creative genius and the demons that ultimately consumed him. A poignant sequence of the film, where Blake rejects the record executive played by Kim Gordon, holds a weighty resonance when viewed through the lens of Gordon's real-life connection to Kurt Cobain. Gordon, a renowned musician in her own right, shared a mild friendship with Cobain during his brief lifetime. In Gordon's 2015 autobiography, she talks about seeing an early Nirvana show, noting that while she and her ex-husband Thurston Moore thought it was amazing, the frontman of the Stooges Iggy Pop wasn't impressed. After the show, Gordon and Moore would meet Cobain backstage. Kim Gordon said it in a book, I'm not sure why, but I felt an immediate kinship with him. When Nirvana toured with us in 1991 before Nevermind broke, no one in Europe knew who they were. Kurt was funny and fun to be around and soaked up any kind of personal attention. I felt very big sisterly, almost maternal when we were together. Unfortunately, as time passed, their connection grew distant as Gordon remained occupied with sonic youth endeavors while Cobain grappled with the immense turmoil of mental illness and personal struggles, ultimately leading to his tragic demise. Gordon's abrupt loss of Cobain with no opportunity for final words left her reeling in shock and disbelief, forever altering the trajectory of her own narrative. Now, as she portrays the seasoned record executive opposite Blake, a character embodying the essence of Cobain, the scene takes on a haunting significance. Through Gordon's presence, the film delicately bridges the connection between past tragedy and present aftermath, evoking a ghostly atmosphere that resonates with the enduring legacy of Cobain's brilliance and the poignant reminders of a life cut tragically short. Michael Pitt's portrayal of a troubled musician in the film is hauntingly authentic. With his subtle gestures and nuanced expressions, Pitt delves deep into the psyche of his character, capturing the essence of isolation and despair. His performance is quietly mesmerizing, conveying a sense of inner turmoil and introspection without the need for excessive dialogue. Pitt's ability to convey complex emotions with such restraint makes his portrayal both compelling and unforgettable. It is undeniable that through Pitt's performance, he successfully manages to mimic Kurt Cobain's presence, mannerisms, and figure so hauntingly that it feels as if Cobain himself has been resurrected on the screen. With Pitt embodying not just the physical likeliness of him, but also the emotional depth and turbulent inner world of the iconic grunge musician. Last Days received a mixed critical reception upon its release. While some praised Gus Van Sant's bold and unconventional approach to storytelling, others felt that the film lacked coherence and failed to fully engage viewers on an intellectual or emotional level. 
On Rotten Tomatoes, it has an approval rating of 58% based on reviews from 119 critics, with an average rating of 6.1 out of 10. The site's consensus says, while the minimalist style is not for all viewers, those who prefer experimentalism will find Last Days hypnotic. Leslie Falperin of Variety wrote, Result is dead on depiction of the hedonistic rock lifestyle, punctuated by sequences of haunting beauty but also quasi religious imagery that borders on tacky. Despite its divisive reception, Last Days has garnered a cult following over the years, with many appreciating its atmospheric ambience and introspective exploration of the human condition. In the ending sequence that displays Blake's ascension into the afterlife, Van San expertly utilizes visual metaphors to delve into the depths of Blake's spiritual journey. The latter symbolizes not only as an ascension from total pain and suffering, but also from the gradual overcoming of earthly burdens and limitations. Each step represents a gradual spiritual enlightenment and liberation from the constraints of mortal existence. As Blake ascends, the stark vulnerability of his nakedness invites us to reflect on Kim's morality, transcendence, and the eternal search for meaning in the face of life's fleeting beauty and profound sorrow. Ultimately, Last Days can be described as a film that leans towards other boredom. However, it's undeniable that through this work, Van San created a piece of art that profoundly memorializes and preserves Kurt Cobain's legacy leading up to his suicide. Rather than posing questions, Last Days simply presents the influential musician's final days before his tragic end. It portrays reality as it is, non-fiction as non-fiction. The film doesn't delve into the deeper layers that could be concealed behind Cobain's last days. Instead, it serves as a dramatic portrayal of his final moments for the audience. Thanks for watching.